Hi guys and welcome back. Today I have another one of those gems from the Royal Road to Card Magic. So for this trick, let's just shuffle up the cards and then I would ask a spectator to cut about half of the cards from the bottom. But to make it a little bit easier, I'll bevel them like this. So they just cut wherever they want, like that. And now I want you to remember this card. I'm gonna look away, but you remember this card, okay? I'm gonna place them back, and I want the spectator to shuffle the cards how much he wants, just like this, okay? Now I'm gonna take out four cards, and I think that one of those cards is going to be your card, okay? So let's pick this one. Pick this one, this one, yeah, why not that one as well? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure one of these cards is going to be your card, okay? So, first of all, I'm gonna show you this, don't say anything, I'm gonna show you this one, okay? I'm gonna place it right there, okay? And the second one, okay? Gonna place it right there. The third one. And the last one. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Now, do you remember which one of these was your card? Uh, not none of them. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's awkward. Okay, let's try something else. Just just point to a card, okay? This one, let's say they point at this one, and maybe this one. Okay? And now I want you to point at one of these. Okay, that one. You sure? Okay, very well. You get that. Place those again. So for the first time, what was your card? They mentioned their card and you go, right, five of clubs. Okay, let's go through how that's done. Okay guys, I hope you liked that little trick. It's called Now You See It, and it's on page 92 in the Royal Road to Card Magic. Awesome book, we're going through that on the channel right now. In the book, they recommend that you do a pretty unpractical force, in my opinion, involving the palm, and it involves turning your back to the audience, and yeah, it's just unpractical. So instead, you could do this with a control, or you can do it with a key card, so you can go back and watch those videos, and you'll get many ideas of how you can do this. But let's do it with a force in this case. And let's pretend our force card is this, and to make it super clear, I've taken a, a blue-backed card. And it's still the five of clubs, and you can just shuffle the cards how much you want, and then glimpse the bottom card, for example. So now you know that the bottom card is the five of clubs, and we're going to force that. And one force, which is in the book, it's called the bottom force. And what you do is you're going to just jog that card back, and then you're going to bevel these cards. And you ask them to just grab uh, yeah, a bunch of cards to cut the cards like that and you just, you know, square those up and show that card, the five of clubs, or force card. So we force that card and we show it to everyone. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take the cards and you're gonna say that, okay, I'll have five or oh, four chances of finding your cards. So I'm gonna take out four cards and yeah, one of them I'm pretty sure is going to be your card. And what you want to do now is you're going to find some cards that contrast your card. So for example, a pretty high red card, but still a spot card could be good. So let's go with the 10 of diamonds and maybe, yeah, why not? The nine of diamonds and the 10 of hearts. So these are pretty, you know, similar as well, which is good. And you place them face down and then the last one is going to be their selection. And you don't show that to them, of course. And now you place the deck away, because you're not going to use that anymore. And now you say you're going to show them the four cards. And I like to say also that, but don't tell me if I'm right or not yet. Okay, you're going to take the cards in glide position, and you're going to show the first card like this, which is not their card, of course. And you're going to place that 
in a row like this. And what you're going to do now is you're going to take the next card and place it on top. Just casually, don't make a thing of it. If you just do this casually, you condition the audience into thinking that, okay, this is, yeah, just the procedure, you know. And you show the next card, not their card, of course. And what you're going to do now is you're going to execute the glide, okay? So you can go check the glide video uh, if you don't, if you haven't, and if you don't know the glide. But you do the glide and you're going to take their selection and place that next. And you take the card you just showed and place that on top because you don't want to show it twice in a row. And you show the next one and place that back. And then you show this pretty quickly. Do it casually, but a little bit quicker. And the fact that these are quite similar, it's also, yeah, for these obvious reasons. And now you're gonna ask them, okay, so which one of these was your card? And they're gonna say, well, none of them. And now you act a little bit, okay, that's awkward. Let's try something else. Let's just point to a card. So in most cases, they are going to point uh, to this card for a number of psychological reasons we're not gonna get into. So if they do, all is, you know, good, obviously. But if they point to another one, you just do the magician's force. So it works like this. You ask them to simply point at a card. You don't tell them to pick it up or, you know, choose a card. You just ask them to point at a card. So let's say they point to this one and to this one, for example. In that case, you discard those and you keep these two. Or they can point first to this one and then to this one. And in that case, you simply discard these two, just like that. And now, whatever they pick, you know, you're fine. Because if they pick this one, you're simply going to take that away. And if they pick this one, you know, you give them to give it to them and then you just place that away. Just play around with this and think a little bit about it. But whatever you do, you're going to end up with their selection. So that's the magician's force. Okay, so I hope you liked that. It's actually a pretty good trick. It's one of those sucker effects where it seems like the magician fails, but then everything sorts itself out and they are always very appreciated. Okay, once again, I hope you liked that. And if you did, like the video and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.